What's up everyone? I got my guy, Kenny Conwell here. He came through and blessed us with some things we can't talk about on day two hour of our mastermind, right? And so, Kenny, how was it, bro? It was awesome, man. Connecting with other founders who get it, but also want to take their things to the next level was great, sharing some really powerful concepts with the community. So, very interesting story about Kenny. He was my consultant client number one and really encouraged me to start on this journey, which now maybe five years later, here I am today. So I want to publicly thank you for encouraging me to do that. And then um, because of our relationship, literally he shared stuff that are like his personal connections in his business. And so, and so I really just want to thank you for being transparent and sharing some stuff. You want to talk, you want to say like what you talked about? Yeah. So the main thing we talked about today was the importance of having a good structure. So many founders and entrepreneurs don't think about the nuances of making sure they're structured correctly from a tax perspective, a legal perspective, and most importantly, a working capital perspective. So we really got into the weeds of that today. And you went deep and we gave real life examples of how you're structured, how mm -hmm. we're structured, mistakes I made when exiting my business. I wish I would have talked to Kenny five years ago. I would have been in a much better place, but that was a very expensive mistake, but a mistake I'm never gonna make again. Right. And we shared that example and I was vulnerable enough to share that example so that the founders in our in our mastermind wouldn't have to go through that mistake. Right. So sometimes experience doesn't have to be the most expensive teacher. So for you guys who want to come to Gamal's mastermind, you'll have to, you'll have the benefit of not having to pay that price. So now you can accelerate even further. Because our audiences are, are largely e-com brands with physical products and they are not typically set up right to be bankable, they have to rely on very expensive merchant cash advance loans, which are PayPal and Shopify Capital, where they give you a lot of money at Black Friday, but then they do mandatory daily or weekly sweeps that right. kills cash flow. Right. How important is cash flow to an e-com founder versus profitability? It's extremely important because as long as you have cash flow coming in, not to sound weird here, you can still be technically not profitable, but as long as you have cash flow to keep the lights on or coming through, you're going to be able to sustain. But in some i'm so, so glad you asked this or even said this so because in some cases you can get revenue and look extremely profitable but if you're not getting the cash associated with that revenue because it's like invoicing etc then you're going to go out of business so we want to make sure that from a cash flow perspective you put yourself in the best position to win and you get access to OPM or TBM. Um, the simplest way to get access to capital was just leveraging a good structure and your personal credit. So that way you don't have to give up equity. I'm not saying you shouldn't go out and get OPM, literally other people's money. But typically when you do that, you're giving up some type of equity. So depending upon- Dilutive. Yeah. You, you own less of your company. You do. And as we talked about, your company as an entrepreneur is your most valuable asset, Correct. right? And so Correct. you were giving up a hundred grand you were giving up um, the opportunity to create a hundred grand, but in the long term, you're probably losing a million dollars worth of value in this asset that you're creating, right? Correct, correct. And that's so important. And we didn't get a chance to touch on this and I wanted us to talk about it, um, but we kind of did, but it's a huge difference between equity and compensation. So really what Gamal is suggesting and what I'm communicating and echoing is if you put yourself in position to you know, pay some tax, get money from the bank, take on some debt, you start to realize that your number one asset is your business. So if I'm building up brand equity, I can two, three, four, five X my profitability, AKA my EBITDA from my company. So when I get that big exit, I'm not having to give away 30, 40, 50% of that exit. I'm essentially retaining that. And that's a different mindset shift. And I think I can appreciate that about you because you've been so focused on equity and, and you've demonstrated it. So now what Gamal is teaching you guys is, hey, look, and what I'm trying to help help you guys understand is let's leverage debt strategically, because that's all it is, retain as much of our asset that we can. And then when we do get the big payout, we ultimately win that way. And then Gamal, I'm not, we can't share it publicly, broke down how you can do some really creative things with structure in order to make sure that Uncle Sam um, doesn't get more than his fair share. And that's all I can say. Of course, we never give out any financial, tax, or legal advice, right? <laughs> um, just hypothetical scenarios that seem to play out time and time again. Um, so you bring up another good point and something that our people, our community, don't seem to get. We are so focused on growing profit, making more money, when we don't realize that the wealthiest people in the world don't focus on making more money. They focus on improving their net worth 
and largely the rich the wealthiest 100 in the in the world in north america the vast majority of them own equ own equity in an asset which value appreciates right during the uh, pandemic um jeff bezos elon musk they grew uh, their they grew their net worth by 100 billion dollars their companies didn't grow by 100 billion dollars they strategically did things to increase their net worth by 100 billion when we met the other day we were talking about how um instead of focusing on net income how you can do that same thing and focus on profit and ebitda growth to make way more money right correct and that's it's so key there because a lot of people um in our community will will be so focused on not paying tax right no nope, it's not in what that does is you may have this high income and get all these write-offs, but you're not adding any value to your asset. So to Gamal's point, when you shift your focus from equity, I mean, from compensation to equity, net income to equity, you start to realize that in simplest, simple terms that we're all familiar with, if my business is worth 500,000 this year, and I'm not solely focused on net income and I increase my business's value by 1.5 million and now my business is worth $2 million and I own the business, I just increased my net worth by $2 million, but I didn't pay tax on the increase of equity. I just increased my value. And that's what we're communicating. And that's what Gamal is like driving home is we really want to start to shift our focus and say, it's, you know, it's okay to pay some tax because EBITDA is what these, what these companies are looking at. And that's what they looked at for you when you got that big payout. Right, but you shifted your focus, right? Correct. So another way of saying this, a better way of avoiding taxes is not having write-offs with your vehicle. It is by growing the value of your company because you can go from making half a million dollars to two million dollars without paying any increase in tax on that. But if you go from five hundred thousand dollars or five hundred thousand to two million, but if you go from five hundred thousand dollars and write off with cars, now you did avoid some taxes. But you didn't you're not worth any more money and not only that now you become more difficult to get approved for a home um get approved for a business loan and all the other things that you need to do so we're trying to have people think higher about how they can structure and grow their business it's so simple i mean it's so cool that you said that so a good way to think about taxes and avoid paying taxes is just to pay your taxes <laughs> because when you pay your taxes it actually helps you lower your taxes and increases your net worth and your value overall it's counterintuitive it is Right, so pay your tax guys. It's okay, right? Um, is there anything? Is there anything else you want as parting words? Um, just shift your focus, guys, um, from compensation to equity, and realize that if you're focused on acquiring assets and your number one asset is your business, it's okay if I pay a little bit of tax because I know that my equity that my equity itself is worth more than the tax I'm going to pay because you never, ever, ever pay tax on asset appreciation. You only pay tax when you distribute it. So now let's shift our focus from compensation to assets that we own and control and build up our net worth. And I love that other bar you said, shifting our mindset from profit to equity. Well, thank you, Kenny. I appreciate you being here today. Always a great time chatting with you, bro. Thanks for dropping gems.